So I thought I'd show a quick, this is definitely not a how-to on laminate flooring, but some of the things that we've learned as we've been working with this stuff since none of us have installed this type of flooring before. Here's a piece of the laminate that we purchased. And if you look at this edge, it has a very small tongue sticking out. And then the other side is the groove. Now we, we had a difficult time. The instructions did not have a good picture with a written description as to what is the tongue and what is the groove. We originally thought this was the tongue because it sticks out farther than the little edge on this side. But we were wrong and we learned that the hard way. So if you look down the edge of the board you can see this piece here is the tongue. Just a little tiny piece sticking out that does not have the finished floor on top. That's the tongue. And then this side if you look from the edge you can see that it has a groove. That That is the groove side. So at least the way we understand it and the way we've been installing it is you always put the tongue toward the wall when you start. So we started on that wall over there. So our tongue on all these boards is facing that, that wall that we started across. So the very first piece that goes up against the wall, you have to cut this tongue off so that it doesn't hit the wall and bind up when you have expansion and buckle the floor. So to put this first piece in here around this particular cabinet, we've got a tongue on this edge as well that needs to come off. So when we push it up against the wall, we have an offset for our appropriate spacing for the expansion. So that's how you can really get confused putting this stuff in if you're like us and we had no clue what we were doing. We had to learn this as we went through the process. But what we're doing is we're laying this board out. My brother just put this board in here. This is the one we're going to cut to fit around this cabinet. So we just set it with the appropriate spacing back here. Quarter inch to three eighths depending on what your floor calls for. Set the spacing and then we're going to come up here and mark where we need to cut it and then measure how far it needs to be cut in and then we'll take a straight edge and tape and measure it and draw out this line so we can cut this piece out so that it'll slip in and it'll fasten into the piece of flooring that's right next to it. Another thing that you need to think about and consider when you're doing this, again this is through trial and error and watching some previous videos, but here's the seam of the previous row. That's where we had two boards connected together right here. So that this row, you don't want your seams to line up. You want to have it staggered. So our next seam will be up here, 10 inches or so away from the previous seam. And then that will set the, all the seams will be offset as we go up that line clear to the wall up in the front. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to measure this out and get it cut and then we'll snap this piece in and I'll probably try to show you just a little bit of video of us snapping a, snapping a couple of these pieces in as we go through this. But we're trying to get this floor completed. We have about three hours because my father and my brother both want to watch a football game that's on today. It starts around two o'clock or so. Anyway, priorities, right? So we're going to get the work done and then relax and play and so forth. All right, we'll see you in, in a bit. All right, so my brother Lauren's holding the board. Say good morning to YouTube, bud. Good morning, YouTube. <laughs> and we got the piece cut. So now he's going to fit the tongue into the groove on the previous row and then get it aligned with the wall so our spacing is correct. See how it's angled at a slight angle? get that set in and then once he gets it where he wants it he'll push this side down and hopefully it'll snap together get it popped into place let's make sure the 
So we have a little bit of a gap from the wall and a little bit of a gap from the cabinet for our expansion and then a piece of trim will go across and cover that up. We're not going to put trim back there because the oven's going to cover that up. May not even put it over here. And then some toe kick will cover the gap up underneath there, which is same color as the cabinets. And that's it. And then we're going to put, he's going to put in a full piece here. And now the fun part, we'll actually get to put two or three full pieces until we get to the end and then we have to cut another one. So we'll just uh, let the video run as he snaps in a few of these pieces. I'll try to get the best video that I can. So this is both groove and groove and he's going to put a piece that has a tongue and a tongue. See how he has a very small gap right here. Just so the tongue of the new board misses the groove of the existing board. Good job. And then we're going to get a few tools and he'll pound this one down just to seat it into the previous board. It's kind of nice if you put some weight or something or a, or a piece a spacer back here so you maintain the gap and it doesn't press both boards together. So he's He's just got a piece down there he's using for a pounding block and then a this is called a pull bar and he can tap that piece and I'll show you at this end as he taps it. One more. Okay there you go. So now it's tapped into place. A nice tight seam that is almost invisible except for the different wood grains and we're ready to put in another piece and go on down the row. These pieces here of course we had to cut special holes and stuff to measure measure and cut so that we could get the flooring around around this heater vent or whatever obstacle you have. You know. This is the way we like to do it. There may be other ways to do this, but what he's going to do is set this board in here backwards. So we have it orientated incorrectly. So both of these are grooves as he was showing you there. This is the end that goes into the board down here. So he's going to bring it up here. We'll set the gap that we want. And then he's going to take a pen or pencil as soon as we find it. And then he'll mark right here where the top finished layer of the board below is. He'll put a little mark there and we'll put a straight edge across here, draw a line and cut it off. And then when we bring this piece back in, we'll flip it around the way it's supposed to fit so the edge that we cut will be up against the wall and it'll pop right into place. So let me shut this off while we go cut that and then I'll show you putting this piece in. Cut. And as you can see, this end that we cut off, there is neither a tongue or a groove. It's just a flat, it's just completely cut off. And by the way, this flooring that we purchased has what they call an underlayment of just a thin sheet of foam across the bottom that prevents floor squeaks and that sort of thing, as far as I understand it. You can either roll that out separately and then put your cut flooring on top, or in this case, it kind of saves a step it's included on each panel which makes it more convenient I suppose it's a little bit more expensive than the other method but hopefully if we cut this the right length he's gonna get that set in there and then the minimal gap here so he can push it down and get it locked in on the edge here and then we have just enough room up here with this gap that we set for him to get the pull tool over the edge so that he can pull it right into place. There you go. All right. So then we've got our gap set up there on the end of the row. We've got the uh, row done and then the piece that we cut off which was the extension of that one gets turned around and it also has a flush cut edge 
and it will be used down here let's go down here and that will be used to start the next row which in this case is really nice because we don't have to cut anything and it'll snap in with the cut edge up against the wall and then here's our seam on the previous row so we have plenty of spacing and that'll set the standard for the next row and all that one is just pop in on the edge and we'll carry on with full pieces until we get up to the end of the room and do it all again nice job Let's do it thanks dad well the flooring is done thanks to the crew members my dad my brother praise the lord for that yes and back in the back she hid behind the wall there my mom but this is what it looks like guys we need to do trim still on a bead of silicone around here and around the edge of the doorway but other than that it came out real nice and an another amazing thing that happened was we finished this floor the entire trailer and had one full board left over untouched that's it one extra board is all we had left But it looks real nice with the corner cabinet. My dad set that back over the top of the floor. Finishes that off real nice. And then, of course, we'll put trim around the edges eventually. Nice little gap right across the front of this sliding door. We'll run a bead of clear silicone right down there. And then trim around, around the rest, all around the edges. But this is what it looks like up front. And the overall look back at the kitchen and the hallway. Hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> Say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. All our friends and family members. <laughs> I'm excited. It's just good. It's a good feeling to have that floor in throughout the entire house. Do you like your new wood floors, Mom? Oh, I love them. Yes. It's going to work out okay for you? So the next phase of this renovation is going to be countertops. We'll try to get that done while my brother's in town. He'll give me a hand with that. And my dad, I'm sure, will help us as well. Get a countertop purchased and cut a hole for the sink, and then we'll get it all laid up in there and go to town on it. Almost time for the football game, and it's definitely time for lunch, so we'll see you guys on the next one. Say goodbye. Goodbye.